Welcome back to Northern Ireland in time for the Men's World Cup. First of all, a look at the ladder, how it's progressing. Sam Go from Singapore has already been eliminated by Carl Bottomley, who's gone up to four. Bulligato's three. The winner of this next match beats Highland, but at the top of the pile, the greatest bowler of the week, Nepo Miseno from the Philippines. Now, the profiles of the players. This is Carl Bottomley, he's 27 years old. And although he's been bowling 20 years, it's his first appearance in the World Cup. The 300 game, the maximum, he's had seven of them. Billy Gatto is 41 years old from Venice, but he's only been bowling eight years, and in that time he's at four 300s. He qualified through the Italian Classic in Rome. We pick up the action as Carl Bottomley is about to bowl his fourth frame. And after each bowler having had three frames, slight advantage to Carl. Got an unusual style, just watch the step up. Strike, that's three in four frames. All of which leads to the familiar hand touch. Yes, the international sign of congratulations or commiserations. They are the scores after four frames for Carl. He's 69, just a slight advantage. Carl accompanied to Northern Ireland this week by his wife, Faye. And uh, Bully Gatto now. Good, stern concentration in those eyes. Again, coming across the face of the head pin in the Brooklyn side, they call it in bowling, and he's left two. There is what they call the sleeper behind there, Paul. Yes, it's the three and nine. On a complete miss, and that's a bad shot from Bulligato at this stage. Looks like he has changed bowling ball, and he's kept the same ball for a strike shot on the next frame. Strike it is. His first in this game. And it's taken him to the fifth frame to get his first strike. And it's been a good change of bowling ball there for Giuliano Bulligato. A little bit more reaction on that green ball that he's using. Sitting on the right, Mr. Peter Robinson, MP for East Belfast. Carl, very easy style, and looks like he's tuned right in there. That's a strike in the fifth frame for Carl, and that means it's a double, his second double of this game. And a lot of catching up now for Bully Gaddle. Carl playing a deep inside line really moves the ball on the lane, needs all of the lane at the moment with the power that he has and the reaction he's getting from that bowling ball. Bottom lead. All these balls are drilled specially, purpose drilled for each player. Mostly it's 16 pounds weight. Few players do bowl at 15 pounds. But 16 is the usual, and that's the sort of result they expect to get with every perfect shot. All 10 pins down, the name of the game. Carl was a little bit worried there on that occasion, but it still gives him a three in a row, Turkey, in bowling terms, and he's quite a nice lead of 30-odd pins over Giuliano. Strike, Bulgato. That's the style. That's what he needs to get him back in this game, the 41-year-old from Venice. Still a lot of catching up to do, and as you can see, he's playing a different line to Carl. He's playing straighter down the boards, but still getting the ball to hook back. Just watch the reaction of this, taking out the seven-pin last there. His occupation, according to himself, is a boat driver in Venice. That's three really good shots in a row for Julian, and he really needs those because he had an open frame in the fourth frame, an eight miss. He had changed his ball on that occasion, but the change did work. He saw the reaction to the ball on that occasion, and he's got three strikes in a row, but still advantage Carl. He's the power man. He's actually only playing a 15-pound ball. Seven pins down, three remain for his spare. Carl Bottomley. Leaving the one, two, four there. Should be quite easy for Carl to pick it up. I think he's a little bit overconfident on that shot, having had three in a row previously. 
What the spare means, he'll have a bonus of the next score he gets from the next ball he rolls. Well, that was Carl's seventh frame, and now he's about to bowl his eighth frame and still has a, quite a nice lead of around 20 pins. Strike here would really shock the competition. Probably too powerful there, Paul. Looking for a strike there, but leaving the four pin. But he's still in a good position. The four pin for his fair. Look at the John Wayne walk back. And again, the hand touch and the bowler's watch. Now, Giuliano desperately needs a strike in his eighth frame. He has three in a row going into it, and to keep anywhere near in touch with Carl, he must really strike in his eighth frame. He's had a very good week here in Dundonald. He qualified in third position, and he had a high game of 254. He desperately needed that, but he left half the pin standing. What happened there? He just stepped off the shot. Watch his feet, and he loses balance. He steps off the shot. Ball goes wide, and has left the one, two, four, six, ten. That's a moment he could have done without against a very impressive bottom lead. And you can see what damage that has done to Bulegato from Venice. He's really up against it now because he's approximately 40 odd pins behind Carl Bottomley and Bulegato has only got the ninth and 10th frame to play. Came back from an open frame, he really needed that. He needed a strike, but he leaves the 10 pin standing. His face at no time this week has betrayed his emotions at all. But he's given Bottomley a great fight for it and kept the Australian going right to the end. Bottomley can't afford a let up. Nice simple spare there for Giuliano, the 10 pin. And as you can see, he's 143 in the eighth frame, but has a nine spare in the ninth. And Carl already 165 in the seventh and a spare in the eighth. So in other words, the Italian is 153 plus whatever he gets with his next ball. Bottomley has bowled extremely well. Look at a far to the left he's beginning, almost behind the ball return. Another strike, watch the John Wayne walk. Strike for Carl in the ninth there. And now about to bowl his 10th frame. Just coming up a little heavy onto the head pin there, leaving the 6-10. You just see it going through the head pin there, the pin's just sliding across, and the 6-10 remaining. And there's the spare for the man from Brisbane, Australia. ball again in the 11th frame for Carl, but leaving the 10 pin, but a nice comfortable game of 224. Bulligato then, in his 10th frame, and he's been one of the real stars of this World Cup, a star in qualifying through the Italian Classic in Rome, the World Cup itself for the very first time, and a lovely week here, during which he had a high game of 254. And that's the sort of style he's been showing right through the week to qualify in third position. Nice, easy style, comfortable and relaxed. That always happens when the pressure is off. Yes, it certainly does. Unfortunately, it's another strike for Giuliano, but had gone wrong earlier in the game. His fourth frame was an eight miss. Then he came back a little bit with one, two, and then three strikes in a row. And then the big mistake, the 5-2 on the eighth frame. Very hard to play catch up, especially playing against a man of Carl's caliber. Remember, he was a complete outsider coming here. And he ends up with a game of 190 and an official fourth place finish in the 1996 World Cup.
Six strikes in this game of 224. A good start, and that's half the battle. Starting off well is always a key in these sort of games. Single head-to-head, -head, so that was the key the first five frames. Now, no doubt you're already thinking about the semi-final. You started off fifth, and you've come up to the semi-final. Brilliant news. How are you going to play it? Uh, same as I've played the other two. You just keep going. Just got to treat them one game at a time. And fortunately, from fifth, I had nowhere to go but up, so it's all forward from here. How much of a competition is Drew Highland going to be for you? Uh, he's an extremely good player. I've been watching him all week. Uh, the last couple of games each day, he's just been sensational to get himself up. So it's going to be a tough game, but we can only try. So a very good day for Australia. Both uh, Carl Bottomley and Carla Honeychurch through to the semi-final. They'll be tough matches. Carl Bottomley and his will meet the representative of the USA. This man, Drew Highland. For now, for Northern Ireland, bye-bye.